everyone today we'll be discussing what is tubular glomerular feedback and how different classes of diuretics affect it this is a schematic representation of renal nephron you can see that a part of the nephron comes in close contact with the efferent and the efferent arteriole this forms the juxta glomerular apparatus and this juxta glomerular apparatus plays a key role in the tubular glomerular feedback mechanism Let's have a closer look at the juxta glomerular apparatus. This is the Bowman's capsule. This is efferent arteriole. This is the efferent arteriole. This is the macula densa cells of the distal tubule. This is a specialized group of epithelial cells in the distal tubule that comes in close contact with the efferent and the efferent arterioles. This is the granular cells or juxta glomerular cells that is involved with secretion of renin this is the extra glomerular mesangial cells or lacus cells the exact function of these cells are unknown the tubular glomerular feedback mechanism ensures relatively constant supply of sodium and chloride at the tubules and avoids spurious fluctuations of these solutes and helps in auto regulation of renal blood flow and the glomerular filtration rate the macula densa cells has the ability to sense the concentration of sodium and chloride and based on these concentration it controls the renal arteriolar resistance and the glomerular filtration rate and, and thus ensures a constant delivery of sodium chloride in the distal tubules before going into the mechanism of tubular glomerular feedback let's understand that the dilatation of the efferent arteriole and constriction of the efferent arteriole would increase the glomerular filtration rate and vice versa that means efferent arteriolar constriction and efferent arteriolar dilatation would decrease the glomerular filtration rate this is a macula densa cell with the sodium 2 chloride potassium symport this is a granular cell responsible for secretion of renin and this is the efferent arteriolar smooth muscle when the sodium chloride delivery is high in the macula densa cell what happens is the macula densa cell starts to swell up this causes an increase in atp in the macula densa cell this atp escapes through the basolateral membrane and subsequently it is converted to adenosine and adenosine what it does is it would inhibit renin secretion from the granular cell and increases calcium in the efferent arteriolar smooth muscle causing contraction of the efferent arteriole the inhibition of renin secretion and contraction of the efferent arteriole would decrease the glomerular filtration rate now let us see how renin secretion would affect the glomerular filtration rate renin is responsible for conversion of angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 This is converted to angiotensin 2 with the help of the enzyme angiotensin converting enzyme. Angiotensin 2 increases aldosterone release which causes salt and water retention. It also causes release of antidiuretic hormone which increases water reabsorption from the collecting duct. And renin also causes vasoconstriction of the efferent arteriole and all this would serve to increase the glomerular filtration rate by increasing the intravascular volume and sodium reabsorption let us see what are the local hormones that regulate renin release this is the adenosine receptor adenosine acts by inhibiting the cyclic amp sympathetic overactivity would increase the cyclic amp and also prostaglandin increases cyclic amp increase in cyclic amp would cause renin release thus prostaglandin and beta adrenergic stimulation would cause renin release whereas adenosine inhibits renin secretion by inhibiting cyclic amp thus when the sodium and chloride concentration increases in the macula densa glomerular filtration is reduced via tubular glomerular feedback whereas when the sodium and chloride concentration dips there is an increase in the glomerular filtration rate How does different classes of diuretics affect the tubular glomerular feedback? 
First, let's see what does the loop diuretics do to the tubular glomerular feedback. Loop diuretics by inhibiting the sodium, 2 chloride potassium sympots decrease the delivery of solutes to macula densa. This would block the tubular glomerular feedback causing efferent arteriolar dilatation and increase of renal blood flow and glomerular filtration rate if the fluid replacement is adequate. This mechanism is believed to be via the release of prostaglandins. That's why when you give NSAIDs, the efficacy of loop diuretics is reduced. Nextly, the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors increase the delivery of solutes to macula densa because it inhibits absorption of sodium from the proximal convoluted tubule. This triggers the tubular glomerular feedback and thus causing efferent arteriolar constriction and decrease of renal blood flow and the glomerular filtration rate. Since the thiazide-like diuretics act on the distal tubule, it has no effect on the renal blood flow and the tubular glomerular feedback. 